Hello everybody, I'm Ann Harrigan, music director of the Billings Symphony Orchestra, and this is Big Sky Sounds. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, we're back in the Alberta Bear Theater, and we are going to be presenting three amazing talents who are no strangers to Billings. <laughs> uh, they're well known. Let me please introduce you to the Ann Trio. To thank you, Anne. Thank you, and thank, thank you for thank having you so us. Fun. Oh, very happy to have you here, and welcome back. You just came back from performance in Dallas. And no, now, in Austin. Uh, Austin. Yes. Austin, thank you. And now, welcome to the cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> it is. But, it is. But we're ready because it was unusually cold in Austin as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you're ready to go. So. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to be performing the Beethoven triple piano concerto. So talk to me a, bit, a little bit about the passion you have for that piece because I know, Angela, when you and I talked, you were very excited about playing the triple with the Billing Symphony. Yes. Well, I'm very excited because it is such a unique and remarkable piece. It, Beethoven writing a concerto for violin, cello, and piano was a real pioneer. It had never been done before. In fact, many composers didn't follow Beethoven. Really, we just have a few triple concertos, more in the 20th century. So it is such a treat to get to. I mean, my short perform answer it. is that Beethoven was just a rock star for doing this because, as Angela pointed out, I mean, for almost 200 years, it's. I mean, it's still considered modern, and yes. I love the word modern because it's like the word new. You know, it was new then and then it becomes old. And modern has the same kind of meaning. So this was so innovative for Beethoven to do this piece that's never been done before. Very innovative. And then, actually, almost 200 years, no one really did it again until our time. And I'm not sure if anybody wrote something, a triple concerto, um, this level, you know? I mean with this kind of popularity, at least. I mean, can you name any no, other? No, I can't. It's really I mean, the gold standard. We can, standard. because Marco Connor wrote us uh, an incredible trip of concerto. Yes, he did. And also Kenji Bunch. Right. So we have yes. had uh, a couple of modern composers write music for us for this same setting, but Beethoven was the first. Beethoven was he the was first. He was a rock star. He was a right? rock star in the gold yeah. standard. Yeah. And so let's back up a little and have each of you introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about what got you started in music and what got you involved in the trio? Do you want to start? Well, we, the, my sisters and I, so the original trio, of course, is Maria, Lucia, and Angela. And Asusa only steps in when Lucia has a conflict. Although Asusa is almost like a member because Asusa is our fourth sister. She, and Asusa fourth member. started yeah. playing with us when Lucia was pregnant right, right. 11 years mm -hmm. ago. Right. Um, but we started, the three sisters started back in Korea. So we were born in Seoul and uh, loved music. Our parents loved music and we uh, grew up listening to a lot of classical music, going to a lot of concerts. And luckily, we all started these instruments and then our, especially our mother figured out, wow, it, it makes a piano trio. You know, then there's all this amazing music written for it. So we started really performing even as children back in Korea. But the trio, the, the trio as a, an ensemble was never planned. So actually it was not our mother, but one of the teachers who figured out, oh, wow, these three instruments, you can play some trios together. And, but once we arrived in America um, to study and we were at Juilliard pre-college mm -hmm. and you know, the school liked the fact that we were three sisters. Mm -hmm. So we started performing a lot for Juilliard. Um, and, but we never thought that we would do a career right? At yeah, that time. I, I think we, we only made that decision when we were in grad school. So we continued our studies in no, college was, at Juilliard. I think during, during, I mean, college years, I think we, yeah. we got approached by a yeah. uh, management company. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's how it got started. And we always said, hey, if we get bored, we can always do something else. But this and here you are. Fun. And here we are, many yeah. years later. <laughs> but we've had lots of transformations you know, since then, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> so this particular trio is a, is a piano trio, which uh, traditionally means violin, cello, and piano. Yeah. So you're the violinist, mm -hmm. you're the cellist, you're the pianist. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't always that case. Sometimes we have different trios, but that's typically when we talk about 
a trio, we think about a piano trio yes. as those a combination. So yeah, yeah. just for people here who might not have heard the word piano trio before mm -hmm. or are as familiar with it. And so it's really exciting. It's, it's something we don't get to do very often because it's quite an undertaking to bring <laughs> yes. in that many people. Yes. And so we're thrilled and I love the Beethoven personally. Mm -hmm. I'm also very excited because I have performed the Beethoven several times with people who aren't a set group of people who know mm -hmm. each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I heard the recordings you sent me, I really, really could sense that shared vision mm -hmm. and the joy that you have when you play together. And just the little details you have when you finish off a phrase. It was uh, very noticeable and I, I'm excited to see what kind of collaborations we have uh, for our audience members who will be listening on Saturday really listening to the ends of the phrases mm -hmm. and how everybody feels that together. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that struck me, and now you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but in Beethoven there's a lot of different ways to get to the end of a phrase. And musically when it's, it's phrase, it's like a sentence, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people kind of go charging into the end and accent the end, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, go for it. I remember <laughs> Leonard Holkinson, I don't know if that's a name that you ever knew, he was a Schnabel's last student. Oh. Uh, and he says, I don't do feminine cadences. <laughs> That's what he called them. And I was like, OK. And so, but what I notice about your phrase is you, you will find a spot in the phrase which isn't necessarily the last note. Mm -hmm. And you'll give that just a little bit of extra love. And this kind of cushion the arrival. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a soft landing. I notice that quite a bit. And it gives it a polish and its sophistication that I think Beethoven would really like. It's, it's not quite the really backing off like with Nicholas Harnicourt, but it's, it's just, again, it's very sophisticated. And you're, the way that you find a line and say, OK, I'm going to go to this note. I think this is the most interesting note here. Yes. But Beethoven, um, this writing is very sophisticated. And yes. I mean, it's like putting chamber music with the orchestra. So it's, it has so many moments that are very intimate. Yes. And um, so, I mean, it is hard to balance because of it, too, but it makes it extra beautiful, you know, to have this intimacy and chamber music like quality um, that's shared. And then while we're sharing that with the orchestra and the audience and with each other, so it, it's quite an amazing piece. I love your use of the word sentence mm -hmm. because for me music is like a sentences and, and paragraphs and chapters and I hope all of my students at Montana State University that are listening are paying Excellent. attention <laughs> because it really is. You need the commas and you need the periods and you need the breaths and I love that. Thank really you, do. thank you. Yeah. Well, especially in Beethoven, I think. And what's exciting about Beethoven is there are so many ways you can approach it. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it interesting because everybody who comes in, they put their stamp on it and they're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. And with the Beethoven Triple Concerto, it's a, it's a multi-way conversation like right, you're talking right. about because the three of you are having conversations. Right. And then you're having a conversation with us, right. the right. orchestra, or you're having yeah. a conversation with us, mm -hmm. or the whole orchestra with the whole trio. So there's this constant back and forth. Yeah. Right, right. And it's yeah. a lot of fun, right. uh, especially the last movement. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> it's so fun. It's really fun, that rondo mm -hmm. and those those, they, those cute little grace notes. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> and the polaka yes. and that super fun dance. I mean, I, I just. It was very fashionable to do this also, mm -hmm. to yes. do this Polish dance. Mm -hmm. And Beethoven, so I, I always feel like, you know, we think of Beethoven as somebody so serious, mm -hmm. but no, not always. I mean, he was having so much fun with this. And, he did. And second movement is so so exceptionally beautiful, it but is. so mm -hmm. short. It's right, I know. Very, it's short. So very short. short. So <laughs> short. Which is also very happen. unusual mm -hmm. to be that short mm -hmm. with one movement. Um, yeah. And then, you know, um, in Austin with um, Maestro Peter, we were actually kind of joking. Oh, maybe Beethoven ran out of ideas. And like, <laughs> just had to get to the third movement. Oh. <laughs> well, and I think the other unusual part of this piece is Beethoven was quite concerned about the balance between violin, cello, and piano. So he made sure that the cello was in a high register a mm -hmm. lot of the times. No, I think and it's because Beethoven loved the cello the most. Well, <laughs> maybe, but also that we get to hear the melody 
you know, spoken by the cello, every single movement. Mm -hmm. I think that's really brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, you remember he wrote the Third Symphony, right. you know, which of course also featured the cellos yes. in the melody. I think Maria's of, right. He really yeah. loved the cello. I think he <laughs> did. I, I think, think he, he did. did. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's amazing, the writing, and uh, it's interesting. You also, as a cellist, you get to usher us out of this um, almost, um, I don't know, transformative second movement that, you know, you're mm -hmm. kind of just floating in this movement and you take it out of that mm -hmm. and you sort of take us in this beautiful arpeggio, these leaps going up and then you just have these repeated <laughs> notes mm -hmm. right. and then we wait and yeah. then we go, <laughs> right? So it's, it's, it's so fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. But, uh, so you talking about, you know, getting, uh, being a kid, how old were you? How old were you when you started playing the piano? I started when I was three. Three. Wow! I, didn't know you I started went to Yamaha when I was three. Music School because my best friend went from the yeah. kindergarten. And this was in Tokyo, right? Osaka, in Japan. Osaka, Osaka, Osaka. Osaka in Japan. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she wanted to play piano, but you know, Japanese um, culture. We didn't have. A, she didn't have lots of money to mm -hmm. take lessons when she was young. So that was her second dream. Someday, if I had a daughter, I want my daughter to play the piano when I'm cooking. So that was the deal. Okay, you can go to Yamaha Music School if you practice while, while she's I'm cooking. Me. I love it. So, what brought you here to the United States then? Well, so I did my undergrad in Tokyo, Japan. Mm -hmm. After that, I had an opportunity and I moved to Thailand. And then I was teaching there for seven years. And we were talking about that. Where in Thailand were you teaching? Bangkok? Bangkok. Oh. Mahidong University. They have a big, big university. So lots of um, music department is um, coming out these, in Thailand. It's becoming mm. very popular. Lots mm. of students. I believe it. I, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I heard uh, a couple of symphony concerts in Thailand that were wonderful. So. Right, right, right. So you spent seven years in Thailand, right, which is one right. of my personal favorite places. <laughs> my my niece and nephew were born there. My sister-in-law uh -huh. is from it's there. Amazing. Beautiful it's country. So it's beautiful. amazing. So You're how so in the world lucky. did we get you from Thailand to come here to, to <laughs> cold Montana? <laughs> I was too young to start teaching in the university, and then lots of my students are getting so good, and I was so afraid that they're gonna beat me someday. <laughs> so, so I decided to come here for a master's and doctor degree. I wanted to practice more. I wanted to ah, study. Well, more. good for you. Mm -hmm. Good for you. And where did yeah. you land? Uh, I, 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 I was in Bozeman, Montana for. Uh, That's how we met. Right. Mm -hmm. Nice. Years, and then mm -hmm. I did a doctor degree at Rutgers, mm -hmm. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in California. And you live in California now? Mm hmm. You're in Bozeman, Angela. I'm in Bozeman. <laughs> but that wasn't always the case. So uh, we were always all in New York, but Angela just decided to leave <laughs> Lucia and me behind in New York and just I moved, moved to the best her. state in the country. Of course. <laughs> New York and, you know, then, then, so that's when the whole transformation started a lot. And then, you know, Lucia, a little bit later, was having a baby. Oh, no. And then <laughs> I was in the middle of having a midlife crisis and my sisters were just nowhere near me <laughs> they were just busy Angela just enjoying Montana um, and Lucia having a baby and then so I thought okay maybe David Bowie will help me so I, um, I I wanted to do a trio album of David Bowie which I thought was gonna cure my midlife crisis <laughs> but they were not participating so I had to do it all by myself and do a solo cello covers of David Bowie's music. Oh my goodness. Um, and I did that and I did feel a little better for a little while. <laughs> and But that's when the trio really started to transform and I think one of the, the strong suits that we have as a group is that you know we always just we were very free with mm -hmm. each other and we all were very individualistic and um, we always embraced that. So, you know, we, it didn't really matter. We never really made any plans and we just, we were just always staying free. And even this combination, you know, this reunion of this trio um, is just so fun for us because, so, you know, when Lucia had to give birth then you know, we performed with Asusa and so we have these reunions and it's oh, very that's... meaningful. That's wonderful. Well, I want to touch on a little bit kind of what you were talking about. So you um, 
change things from your traditional upbringing, mm -hmm. in which you were probably learning all traditional classics mm -hmm. at Juilliard, I imagine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you went in a different direction, started doing David Bowie covers. It wasn't <laughs> just me. I mean, our trio, so... Uh, oh, the whole trio did. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We, we so. were always kind of... Um, we didn't want to feel limited by the right. fact that we are a piano trio, and at Juilliard, um, I think it was Lucia, even though she seems like the shy one, she's actually probably the most radical one, and so mm -hmm. she, you know, she um, heard all this modern music, and um, I mean, they're all just incredible composers. We were surrounded by amazing yes. living composers mm -hmm. right next to us, so it was only natural that we wanted to collaborate with modern dance, and to new music and um, you know it's it's not like we can call up Beethoven right so right right <laughs> it's so fun when yeah. some I mean one of the most fascinating for me with Beethoven's time is that I mean imagine being the Archduke I mean you have all this incredible music <laughs> yes you know dedicated to you mm -hmm. written for you and um, you know that was just the norm in that time it was but we also have all these living composers who were writing music and when they were writing a specific music for our group, I mean, there's no, I mean, it's an incredible feeling, it right? Is. You cannot it really is because compare. you have that live collaboration. Right. <clears throat> but what I'm hearing is, you know, um, some people sort of put music in boxes, mm -hmm. right? Like this is classical music mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. We're classical musicians, so we only play this mm -hmm. repertoire. But what I'm hearing is you play Beethoven and you play Kenji Bunch and you play we David play Bowie. Bernstein, we yeah. play Schizola, I mean we play yeah. all kinds of... In fact we have a very fun encore if you know on Saturday night oh, if we get everybody, to that. Everybody. <laughs> you never know you might get to hear something completely different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but actually the last time we were at Alberta Bird Theatre was with the James Sewell Ballet not even a year ago. So we have been here oh, quite yes, recently. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. You have a so quite a following. We have here. lots of different There's projects. No right. So. And mm -hmm. I mean, we used to come to Billings a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Let's not mention how many <laughs> years ago um, and do all sorts of different programs here. Yes. So um, I mean, our group, we were always kind of a little bit like a little bit of a rebel, you know. Oh, we, uh, nice. We, okay. we never really <laughs> wanted to fit in. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, actually, Angela, I think, I think so. wanted to fit in more. But, uh, I heard I, there was some negotiation over tempos on this. Right? <laughs> you know, we have right. the whole sister yes, thing going. Yes, exactly. But but, uh, I usually give in to Angela. Although, oh. you know, I also feel like we have Corby Skinner to thank for our very first time in Billings, oh. which was many, also like many in Billings years ago. Because yeah. Corby yeah. made. Building so cool. I know. Yes. 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 <laughs> Corby is a good friend and yeah. a good friend of the symphony and to the arts. And oftentimes he's sending me little suggestions, although that no need for you all. You have such a reputation ahead of you. <laughs> I just know we're going to have so much fun. We are. We are. really looking forward to it. I can't <laughs> wait to it. I, I can't wait to hear our rehearsals and the chemistry that we're going to have with the orchestra and the audience and, and I want to thank all of you uh, to, for making the trip in this cold weather. <laughs> and, uh, for those of you who are listening in, uh, our concert is Saturday mm -hmm. and tickets are available at billingsymphony.org. You do not want to miss this. Obviously we are going to have so much fun on <laughs> we stage. We are. And you're going to be so happy to get out of your houses after this week. <laughs> uh, and, and for those of you who are uh, listening in the audience, uh, I know you're going to love it and come back and uh, come to see us at the office and have a chance to chat and say hi to everybody and uh, get to know everybody better. And so I think it's going to be a, an amazing week. There's we'll have no fun. question about that. Yeah, yep. we will really have fun and, and I appreciate everything and I can't wait for the little details of Beethoven we're going to be <laughs> uncovering. <laughs> but, uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And with that, uh, my name is Ann Harrigan again, and this is Big Sky Sounds. If you're listening uh, before the concert, walk, don't walk, run, don't walk <laughs> <laughs> to the ABT box office or come see us at the Billings Symphony offices uh, in downtown Billings. And this is Saturday at 7.30 p.m., strings attached. So thanks, everybody.